who was a prophet was a good chaver of mine. Never understood a single word he said, but we helped him to drink his yarn. And we always have some mighty fine yarn. Welcome to the Haftorah Plethora video podcast, where we might not bring joy to the world, but we do talk about Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and all the other prophets. At least the ones who got their prophecies and writings accepted into the Grand Academy of Haftorot. You're right, Rick. We miss out on Nahum, Zephaniah, and Haggai. Maybe we'll do a special show on those unfortunate prophets and call it the haftorah Les Trio. But today, we're going to examine and chant the Haftorah for the second day of Rosh Hashanah. You know what that means, don't you? Yeah, it'll be the first time that many of our viewers will actually hear this Haftorah, since by the time we get to it on the second day of Rosh Hashanah, most people are stuffed, have had their share of shul, and are ready for a nap. Well, that too. But I was referring to the fact that we're finally breaking out of our streak of Haftorah plethora episodes on Isaiah. We just finished our seventh in a row this week, and we're finally back to Jeremiah our musical namesake, an inspiration for the frog theme of our graphics. Anyway, I'm Larry Herman, sipping some very fine wine and talking Haftarah today with my very good chaver, the king of cantillation, Rick Muller. How are you doing on this beautiful Sunday afternoon, Rick? I'm great. Two Haftarah plethoras in one week and a chance to actually see all of our fans. What could be better? I can only think of one thing. And I know what that is. That's right, Rick. Being with and talking about my granddaughter, Millie, outweighs every other pleasure. And what's that precious and precocious kid up to this week? Well, she's not yet resetting Haftara, but she is starting to sit up. Looks like gravity helped her slide out of that chair a little bit. Yeah, she will get out before I could strap her in there. But here she is, sitting up in a new high chair that we got for her. Someday soon you'll have a chumash in front of her so she can follow along with Zadie. Ah ha ha. And Millie has a couple of protectors in Stevie and Billy, who think that she's part of their pack. Seems like she thinks so too. Well, before this show goes to the dogs, let's get back to the Haftara for the second day of Rosh Hashanah. Some of our viewers may not be familiar with what we do here. Perhaps we should give them a general explanation. Sure, Rick. In the Haftarah Plethora, we take a look at the weekly Haftarah and read on Shabbat. Although for this Haftarah Plethora Live, we're talking about the Haftarah for the second day of Rosh Hashanah, which comes from Jeremiah. Usually, I try to give an overview of the text, place it into some kind of context, and then highlight the main message, themes, symbols, or linguistic patterns found in the text. Usually with a little bit of humor. Or at least I try to find something to lighten up the atmosphere. I try to first examine the text with fresh eyes and not simply rehash what commentators such as Rashi have to say. I often find it useful to compare the translation by Robert Alter to the JPS commentary found in the Eitz Chaim Chumash and the Lev Shalem Machzor. And we often complain about the JPS translation. I think with good reason, as I expect to demonstrate again today. Can't wait. I generally focus on the trope or the cantillation marks of the text. I like to explain how the Masoretes, mainly Aaron ben Asher and Shlomo ben Buya, added these musical notations as a form of commentary, accentuating certain words and phrases that they thought particularly meaningful. The tropes instruct us how to read the text, linking some words together, keeping some words apart, one general rule is that the rarest trope are usually an indication of the most important or pivotal ideas in the Haftorah or the Torah reading. It works there too. And I like to point out how certain trope add a sense of drama and feeling. And we each have our favorites. I'm partial to the Kadma Vazla. And I like the Dargat Tavirs. We usually break the chanting of the Haftorah down into several sections and talk about the highlights before Rick chants the section. 
Why don't we just get on with our exp- uh, examination of the Haftorah for the second day of Rosh Hashanah? Good idea, Rick. The, this Haftorah comes from what is called the Book of Consolation. It's not actually a separate book, but rather chapters 30 and 31 of the Book of Jeremiah. It's called the Book of Consolation for two reasons. First, the second verse of chapter 30 tells us that God instructed Jeremiah to write down in a scroll all the words that I have spoken to you, I being God, ergo a scroll or a book. And second, the verses in these two chapters are proclamations of hope and promises of restoration and reunification of the Jewish people, hence consolation. Okay, that sounds like a nice theme for Rosh Hashanah. Perhaps, but I'm actually not so convinced. First of all, what are the themes of Rosh Hashanah, Rick? Well, there's creation, uh, tshuva, repentance, uh, renewal. After all, it's the beginning of the new year. And awe, it's the beginning of the yamim no ra'im, the days of awe. Excellent. And as we'll see, only one of those themes, tshuva, is remotely mentioned in the Haftara. But there are also three themes that appear in the Rosh Hashanah Musaf service. Malchuyot, kingship, zikronot, or remembrance, and shofrot, shofar. And once again, only one of these themes, zikronot, is actually mentioned in the Haftara. Now that I think of it, Rosh Hashanah is more of an individual, introspective holiday. It's not so much a national day. We don't usually think about restoration or reunification. So why did our sages choose these verses as the Haftorah for the second day? I'll get into that in just a moment. Remember, Jeremiah was a Judean. Not a bullfrog. No, not a bullfrog, who lived through the Babylonian conquest of the southern kingdom of Judea. But all the verses in our Haftorah refer to the restoration of Israel, the northern kingdom, following the Assyrian conquest and exile of the ten tribes. Jeremiah uses a variety of terms to let us know that he and God are talking about the northern kingdom. These include Israel, Maiden Israel, the hills of Samaria, the heights of Ephraim, the remnant of Israel, the Northland, father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. There are numerous references to Ephraim, as Ephraim was the strongest of the northern tribes, and therefore a symbol of all of Israel. You still haven't explained the link between our Haftorah and Rosh Hashanah? I'm getting to that just now. It's in the last three verses of the Haftarah. Remember, Adonai is doing the declaring through the words of Jeremiah. In verse 18, God tells Rachel, the grandmother of Ephraim, that he hears Ephraim, or is it Israel, expressing words of tshuva. It reads, You have chastised me, and I am chastised, like a calf that has not been broken. Receive me back, let me return, for you, O Lord, are my God. And then, in the next verse, Ephraim continues with the words of regret and a plea for forgiveness. Now that I have turned back, I am filled with remorse. I am ashamed and humiliated, for I bear the disgrace of my youth. And finally, in verse 20, come remembrance and acceptance by God. I don't like the JPS translation of this verse at all, so I'm going to use a translation found in the Sax Korn Machzor. It reads, Is Ephraim not a treasured son to me, my child of delights? As I speak of him always, I remember him again. I will tender him compassion, says the Lord. I get it. These three verses emphasize the role of tshuva and the hope that we have to be remembered by God and then treated with compassion. That's the hope we all have on Rosh Hashanah. And that's the link to Rosh Hashanah. In fact, this last verse, beginning with Haven Yakirli, appears at the end of the Zichronot section of the Rosh Hashanah Musaf service. And it's been made into a song many times over, I suppose. I just know one of them. When I was young, it went, Haven Yakirli, Yakirli Ephraim, Im Yeledim, Yeled Shashuim. It went on for a long time and very dramatic. Very but nice. That's, that's what I remember of it. All right, that was very nice. Okay, and um, fine. So do we have time to discuss the tropes now? Sure, Rick, there's always time to discuss the trope. What have you got? 
Um, I generally want to make two points and then talk more about the trope uh, before I chant each section. In the past, I've explained that the Masoretes, the rabbis of the tradition, divided the text into sections by using pays and samachs, pay for petucha, it's open, samach uh, for stuma, for closed. But uh, how did they know where to put the section breaks? This week, the rare munach lagarme, which is a pair of munachs separated by a vertical line, helps us to understand. There are three of them in our Haftorah, each followed by a revia, falling on the phrase, ko amar Adonai, thus said the Lord, very important statement for Jeremiah. That's a signal phrase for a new section, a new set of ideas. In fact, there's one more, ko amar Adonai, without the munach lagarme on the first verse of the Haftorah. But there's one more petucha after verse 9. That's not followed by a ko amar Adonai. Glad you mentioned that. Because verse 10 begins with the words Shimu Dvar Adonai, or hear the word of the Lord, which is very similar, and this also indicates a section break. Wow. Now we know what to look for when we see those pays and samachs. The other trope thing I wanted to explain is the use of the rare Zarka Segol combination, which appears three times, each of which <clears throat> echoes your description of the Haftorah as being about restoration and reunification, so the trope helped with the theme. Um, in verse 8, we have the kibat team, miyarke te'aretz, meaning gather them from the ends of the, uh, from the, ends of the earth. <clears throat> in verse 9, we have uvtachanu nim, ovi lame, meaning in supplication, I will lead them. And in verse 12, we have uva uverina nuvim ron sion, meaning they shall come and sing gladly on the heights of Zion. So all those three affirm the theme, a theme of restoration and reunification. Uh, I'll have more to say later. There's seven yativs, uh, two zakev gadols, and there's others uh, before I chant each section. Uh, so what are the divisions going to be this week? Since you already explained so nicely, let's follow the divisions that the Masoretes established with their pays and samachs. We'll start with verses 2 through 6, where God proclaims the return of the northern kingdom, Israel. Then continue with verses 7 through 9, which speak of the ingathering of Jacob and the remnant of Israel. Verses 10 through 14 are an address to the nations of the world, where God explains that he who scattered Israel will gather them in. Verse 15 is a section all by itself, with a sad Rachel weeping for her children. Then verses 16 and 17, Rachel is comforted by God with news of the return of her children to their land, and will close with verses 18 through 20, where God accepts the repentance of Ephraim on behalf of Israel, and we hope, on behalf of all of us. Sounds great. I just have two comments on the first section, uh, 2 through 6. First, the Zakif Gadol at the beginning of uh, verse 3 on Merachok. The word is from afar, perhaps emphasizing how distant the people had been from God. And then the four examples of the Yativ, the little arrowhead, the sharp piercing, but short trope that's usually assigned to short words that require attention. Here we see it on Ko, the very beginning, on Ode in verse 4, which means again, and then again in verse 5, and then kumu uh, in verse 6. Uh, there the yativ accentuates the command to get up. It's a dramatic. Rick, time for the bracha, and then to start chanting. The haftar is found on page 1231 of Eitz Chaim Chumash, on page 111 of the Lev Shalem Machzor, and, technology and normgar permitting, should appear on your screen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher kichana b'mitzvotav b'tzivanu la'asok b'divrei Torah. Amen. And then, Ko amar Adonai matzachen b'amidbar am sride charev aloch lahargio Yisrael Merachok Adonai 
נראה לי, באהבת עולם אהבתיך, על כן משכתיך חסד. עוד אבנך ונבנית בתולת ישראל, עוד תעדית ופייך ויצאת במחול משחקי. עוד תדעי חרמים בהרי שומרון, נטעו נוטעים וחיללו. כי יש יום קראו נוצרים בהר אפרים, קומו ונעלה ציון אל אדוני. Eloheinu. Very nice. Rick, I see that in the next section, I get my favorite trope, a kadmava azla, preceded by a katana. What's all that about? Right, in verse 8, we've got hineni, which means behold, and um, then you have mevi otam, uh, and I will bring them in. The restoration, as you have noted. Knowing what we know, we can attach the hope that our tshuva will be accepted. And we have yet another yativ on the small word bum, also in verse 8, meaning in them. Everyone will be included in this great ingathering. Let's hope so. Rick, chant verses 7 through 9. Ki cho amar Adonai, ronu liyaakov simcha. וצהלו בראש הגויים, השמיעו הללו ואמרו, הושע אדוני את עמך, את שארית ישראל. אמן. הנני מביא אותם מארץ צפון, וקיבצתים מירכתי הארץ, בם עיוור ופיסח, הרב יולדת יחדיו, קהל גדול ישובו הנה. בבכי יבואו, ובטחנו נהים, הובילם, הוליכם אל נחלי מים, בדרך ישר לא ייכשלו בך, כי הייתי לישראל לאב, ואפרים בכורי הוא. Very nice. In the next section, Rick, we have the second Zakef Gadol on the word Ugo Alo in verse 11. Is that special? I think so. Are you kidding me? It's what this Haftor and Rosh Hashanah are all about, redemption. Here the verse refers to Jacob, whose other name was Yisrael, all part of the same theme, just like you said. And we've also got a Gershaim in verse 12 on the word Vinaharu, which means shine. We talked about this word in the Haftorah Plethora for Ki Tavo this week. It's in the Haftorah for Shabbat. The people will shine brightly on the heights of Zion. Back to chanting. Shimu dvar Adonai goyim v'hagidu v'ayim mimerchak v'imru mezare Yisrael Yikabsenu Ushmaro Kuroe Edro Kifada Donai Ed Yaakov Ugalo Miad Chazak Mimenu Uva U Berina Nuvim Roman Sion Benaharu El Tuv Adonai Adagan 
ועל תירוש ועל יצהר ועל בני צאן ובקר והייתה נפשם כגן, sorry, כגן רבה ולא יוסיפו לדאבה עוד. אז תשמח בתולה במחול ובחורים וזקנים יחדיו והפכתי אבלם לששון וניחמתים ושימחתים מגונם וריבתי נפש הכהנים דשן בעמי את טובי יסבעו נאום אדוני. ריק, ורס 15 נהי, we have, and מבקה. Rachel refuses to be comforted as the Tavir on Ma'ana shows us. I'm almost brought to tears myself. Chant verse 15, Rick. Ko amar Adonai. Sorry. Ko amar Adonai. Ko berama nishma nehi. בכי תמרורים רחל מבכה על בניך מענה להנחם על בניך כי איננו. So sad. Rick, let me try my hand at this next section. Besides the koamar, the only special trope here is the תלישה קטנה on the tiny word כי. in verse 16. But if we read this verse, we can see that this is the pivot or the fulcrum of the entire Haftarah. God is telling Rachel to hold back her weeping. Why? Because that little word key or because introduces the reason. Her children shall return. That little word with a dramatic Talisha Ketana points us to the uplifting conclusion. Sing it for us, Rick. And hit that key really hard. Ko amar Adonai min i kolech mi bechi ve'enayich mi dima ki yesh sachar lifulatech nuam Adonai v'shavu me'eretz o'yev. ויש תקווה לאחריתך, נאום אדוני, ושבו בנים לגבולם. שמוע שמעתי, אפרים מתנודד, יסרתני ואבשר, כעגל לא לומד. השיבני ואשובה, כי אתה אדוני אלוהי. כי אחרי שובי ניחמתי, ואחרי היוודעי, ספגתי על ירך. פושתי וגם נחלמתי, כי נשאתי חרפת נעורי. הבן יכיר לי אפרים עם ילד שעשועים כי מדי דברי בו זכור אזכרנו עוד אכן עמו מעי לו, רחם רחמנו, נאום אדוני. כל הכבוד, ריק.
We hope that you've enjoyed this episode of Haftarah Plethora Live. A very special thanks to Norm Gar, who spends hours putting together the opening and closing graphics, the, the It's Milly Time segment, preparing the text that you can follow along on the screen, and making musical selections and video clips to complement our chatter. We do invite you to write us with your thoughts and comments, compliments and criticisms. Our emails are on the closing credits, and also we'll put them into the chat. And if you like our Zoomcast, please tune in each week and forward the link to your family and friends. Last night was the beginning of Slichot, so we know that Rosh Hashanah is coming soon. We wish you all a Shana Tova and Mutuka. We hope that we've made your holiday just a tiny bit more interesting. Shana Tova and Shavua Tov. And if, any, if anybody is still here with us, we'll be happy to answer your questions after Norm's closing credits.